All right, in this uh, video, we're going to start uh, working on our engine again, and we're going to go through um, the cooling system, and we'll go through the alternator. Now, I have an electric radiator on here. All right, so what I would recommend is if you're going to use, especially a small boat, you might as well do raw water cooling. Now, what is raw water cooling? So raw water cooling takes seawater. It pumps seawater through uh, a pump, through the engine cooling manifold, um, which is, where is it? Um, I don't have one on here, so I need to put one on there. So we'll add a cooling manifold. Um, it will go through the cooling manifold to cool the engine, and then it would go back out into the ocean. The problem is you'll get scaling, which I actually don't think is in the game right now, which you would get salt crystals in the engine, it would clog up the engine, and it would, you know, make the engine overheat. We can also use an electric radiator, and since we're not in the water, I'm going to use that. So I need to add a node to be able to cool. So uh, we'll add that. Then we'll also go into the alternator. We'll make an automated alternator where we use a PID to test the battery. So what it's going to do is as the battery loses charge, it's only going to give the alternator enough clutch to recharge the battery. So let's look into that. All right, so the first thing we need to do is add a cooling manifold. All right, so what I'm going to actually do, I think, here is... Um, Let's see, where do I want to add it? Let me try to find a good spot. So I think what I'll do is I will, um, I'm going to add a, uh, I'll add a, a section right here. So I'm going to um, highlight this, we'll cut it, and I'll just move it out of the way. Okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a manifold T piece, a manifold T piece here. And I think I'll go, let me see, I'll go like that. I will take this and I'll add it back on over here. So we'll cut it. All right, we'll add that here. We will paste, clear, and merge. All right, now I'm going to cut this here. And I will um, type in cool for coolant manifold. There it is. All right, and we'll route the pipe through a cooling manifold. Now this is going to cool our engine. All right, now you might see on some other guides, especially from earlier on, that people put tanks on there with fresh water. You don't need to do that anymore. Um, if you're using a system like this, the engine spawns with coolant in it. All right, so you don't need to do that. All right, so now we have um, a pump. Let me check the direction of the flow. So if you need to check the direction, you can delete a block. You can look here, it says fluid in, okay, and just hit undo and it'll put it back. So the fluid comes into the pump, it's pumped, it goes out of the pump, it goes through the engine to cool the engine, it comes back around, it goes into the radiator, the radiator cools the coolant, it comes back out and it just cycles, all right? So now let's go into our microcontroller, all right? And so we need to add some nodes here, all right? So we have two more spots, so let's add... Um, We'll do pump, and we want to make that a number because it's a uh, clutch. Let's do output, um, coolant pump, All right, coolant pump. All right, so now we can do this a couple ways. Um, we can um, we can either have it just turn on a hundred percent clutch, or we can have it um, modulate the clutch with a PID. Um, so let me think what's going to be easy. Let's just do it on off for now. And if we want to get more complicated, we can do it later. So we'll start with a numerical switch box. Again, if you don't put a number, it's zero. So you have two options. You have zero or you have, um, one, or you have a number we'll put in. So we'll make it one. That means that you have 100% clutch on your coolant pump. So we'll take the one, we'll put it there. All right, now we need to trigger this, all right? So let's first, we'll grab our coolant pump number, all right, and we'll put it here and we'll connect it to a switch box. So when do we want to turn our um, switch box on? So let's say if it is, um, we can do this a couple ways. One, we can do a greater than, or we can do a, um, we can do a threshold gate. So let's say if it's between 20 degrees and 116 is when the engine lights on fire. So let's just say 120 degrees. So if the temperature of the engine 
is between 20 degrees and 120 degrees, that will turn our numerical switch box on. All right, that will make our clutch on our pump go from zero to one. That will turn on our coolant pump. All right, now um, I also want to turn on the electric radiator, so we'll do that. So we need some more nodes. So let's expand our um, let's expand our uh, microcontroller. Update that. Let's just make sure that I didn't um, break anything when I expanded it. I did not. Okay, good. So let's go back. So we need to add a node. So let's go logic, add a node. All right, we're going to do an on-off output radiator. Radiator, okay. And let's go back in. All right, so if we look up here, we have our radiator. All right, so if the temperature is between 20 and 100, we also want to turn on our electric radiator to cool our coolant. All right, so we need a temperature reading. So what we'll do here is we'll add another node. This next node is going to be from the engine. It's a composite. It's an input. We'll put engine. All right, we'll go in here. We'll find it. Here's our engine. Okay. Now, just off the top of my head, I know that um, the number we want to read is 3. 3 tells us our engine temperature. All right, so we want to take our engine temperature. We want to read it. All right, so now the engine is going to send us composite 3, which is our temperature. All right, I'll show you where you can find that. If the temperature is between 20 degrees and a 120 degrees, it's going to turn on our clutch pump, or turn on the clutch for our pump, and it's going to also turn on the radiator. Now, if we make this clutch 100%, if we make this clutch on, it's going to add resistance on our engine and could stall our engine. So, we don't want that on when we're starting. All right. So in order to turn this on, let's put an AND condition in there. All right, so let's find an AND here. We'll highlight it, go control C, V. All right, let's go. Um, so that is if it's between 20 and 100, it will turn on the, um, the it will switch the clutch. And um, we'll put a knot. Where's a knot? Let's find one. Here's a knot. And so we want to make sure it doesn't come on when the engine is starting. All right, so and this not. So if the starter is engaged, we do not want um, we do not want this to put the clutch on that pump because it will uh, add extra resistance on our engine. All right, so this is all set up to auto cool. So if we go over 20 degrees, it will automatically turn on our clutch to cool our pump. Now we could go more complicated. We could go a PID and have it automatically change the clutch, um, but it's mostly probably going to go 100% clutch. You know, you're not going to lose enough heat in this to probably um, modulate. You know, we could do that, that, but that's more complicated. We won't get into that right now. So let's update this. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look. Let's look at logic uh, composite. Now let's touch this node here. Okay, so this is our modular engine. This is where we get our engine composite. It says outputs data from cylinder. Value 1 is air volume. Value 2 is fuel volume. Value 3 is temperature. Remember I said 3 is temperature. Value 1 and 2 is what we'd use if we wanted to automate our stoichiometry. So we don't need that yet. So let's take this node and we'll connect it to our engine. All right, let's go back to data. Let's find our new nodes here. We have our coolant pump, which is right here. And we should have a Boolean and on-off for our radiator, for our electric radiator. Let's hook that on. All right, and let's uh, start up our engine. We'll start up our engine, we'll go full throttle. All right, six to start. All right, let's go full throttle. All right, so that's set to full throttle. Now let's look at the temperature of our cylinder. Let's see if I can find a place to look at the cylinder. So there's our cylinder. As you can see, our manifold is at 20 degrees. So we should be engaging the pump. Pump is at 100%. And as you can see, we're pumping in about 50 something liters per second. And we're pumping out about 50 liters per second into the radiator. All right. And as you can see, our temperature is climbing. We can see that our radiator is turned on. So let's let this run for a little bit, um, get the temperature up. So you can see the temperature is still climbing. So we are pumping through. All 
right? And so that's our cooling system. Now, there are more advanced cooling systems. Um, like I was saying, if, if this was a real boat, I would not use a radiator. A lot of people are like, oh, they just use a radiator. I would use a realistic system of raw water cooling where you bring seawater in, you run it through the pump, through the coolant manifold, and dump it back out in the ocean. That's going to always give you nice cold water. All right, so that's our cooling system. Uh, I'll uh, save the alternator, and we'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching.